So what you doing? So I work. I'm in a work fantasy football league. receiver who is just playing right now so i'm watching he's really good it literally was like that was the weirdest thing i saw on your face just now <laughs> like your bottle just keeps coming in and out of <laughs> this is magic trick it's like magic so you're watching a browns game who i'm players? not a steelers or browns fan oh it's a steelers browns game so it's a yeah Rams i mean like game. who do who do I why like I care nothing for the Steelers or the Browns? <laughs> it's just like a whole lot. Yeah, you are watching it for the fantasy football. For fantasy football. I've what? done fantasy football Thanks. once before. And yeah. Did you I've, see that boy um garbage got traded today? I did not. Let me pull that up. But I used to do fantasy football. I just like don't care enough about the NFL. You know, like I like players and I'll follow specific players and I'll like I like looking up stats, like how did someone do? Right. I just, I just don't care enough to like invest enough time into really thinking about who I'm gonna pick. Every time I've done it, I always pick the the recommended people, like who's recommended. Yeah, right you just now, like right? all, pretty much auto draft. And you then are. it's like, okay, and I always end up middle of the pack. I never lose. I never won. I'm not playing this year. Right now I'm one and one. I'm really upset because last – so I have my I have two quarterbacks on my team. I have Josh Allen, who's just awesome, right? Yeah, yeah. Also, I have Tua Tagovailoa, the, my, the Dolphins quarterback. Yeah, who's, like, been doing amazing too. Like, Yesterday on Sunday, not yesterday on Sunday, he had the best game of his career for sure. Yeah, and like I'm really upset because the by the player I the guy I played against last week, he had Lamar Jackson as, as his QB who also had a great game. Yeah, and Tyreek Hill as his wide receiver one, mm-hmm. and so I lost like seven points because. Wow. But if I had just played, if I I always start Josh Allen. Because I mean, who's who? Why would you start Tua over Josh Allen? So I used to do Josh Allen, but if I had just played Tua last week, I would have won my game. But I, so right now I'm one on one, and I just I'm not like I don't follow football really. I just like get really competitive. I want to win. Yeah, so totally, I mean, totally. Yeah, that's frustrating. That's what's frustrating about fantasy football is you just never know, right? Like, just the craziest things can happen. And certain leagues are interesting because the way they score points, right? Yeah. And so that's always – most leagues are are pretty similar how they score points, but every once in a while you get in a league and you have to look how are they scoring certain things so you can maximize your point total by having okay. specific, specific type of players. I mean, so, having like, – my competitive me wanting to win is making it so I'm like actually following like things closer now where I actually pay attention to like what my matchups are. Like it'll give me the projection projected points, but really I know if like they're playing a good defense, then it's just gonna be gonna be completely wrong or whatever, you know? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so Boyan got traded to the Boyan Pist- got traded for for pretty much nothing. Jazz, the Jazz pretty much get cap space cleared up. Okay, so I'm just pulling it up. The Utah Jazz are finalizing a trade to send veteran forward Boyan Bogdanovich to the Detroit Pistons for Kelly Olynyk and Saban Lee. Wow, so we really are just gutting and yeah. gutting and going forward. So it's I'm like, thinking, let's wash our I'm hands. honestly thinking the only reason. Like there must be no team that offered a first round pick for Bogdan Bogdanovich. Well, I mean, it's kind of an interesting position, Boyan plays, because he's well, he's a he's power a three, forward. He's a three point shooter. You get him for his shooting. That's yeah. why you pick him up. But so he's like a four three. He's like a four three player. He yeah. can't play the five. 
He's and more. So, he's a three. He's a small forward. Yeah. Although in the Jazz starting lineup, he played the four. Yeah. Because Neal played the small forward. So I'm trying to think though, who are thirty better threes than him? You well, know, Clay Thompson. There's a there's a lot. My point is, yeah. it's like it's a position that you're willing. That there's just a lot of talent, and I feel like a lot of people are willing to his position are willing to gamble on some of their young prospects a little bit more and like give them a shot and see what they have versus, you know what I mean? Like he's, he's good. He's great. I love Boyan, but the interesting uh, part of the deal is this young is Saban Lee. I looked him up. He's this really young guard. It's like a smaller guard. Mm -hmm. Uh, The weird thing now is um, when NBA, when NBA training camp starts, you can only have 15 players on your roster. Mm Mm-hmm. And right now the Jazz have 18. Yeah, so they're gonna be cutting a couple. They have so like they've acquired so many players and from trades this summer. And so now I'm just wondering like who are they gonna keep? You know, like Yeah. Yeah, I think uh it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting. I watched this, I watched this, it was on the ESPN app. Uh, it was a clip of an interview from Danny Ainge right about why he split everyone up and he said basically that i don't know if you saw this clip or not did you see it? he basically like said, saying like the group clearly didn't believe in each other yes yes yeah. that's exactly it and now pretty much all the players are like we believed in each other it's just like really did you that's how i feel like did you really like well, to me when he said that at least i felt like there was reasoning why he was breaking it all up right yeah. i was like okay like it's just not working out. We're not believing in each other. We obviously have tried this for multiple seasons. We can't get yeah, over I the mean, top. It's Let's, we've never gone past second over. round. So here's what's gonna happen though. Again, Monday morning quarterbacks, us and everyone else, in three years from now, if the Jazz still suck, we're just gonna be ripping on him. Danny, oh, yeah. you hate on Danny. If the Jazz are if the Jazz are great again, then yeah. Danny is gonna be he'll have a statue next to John and and uh and Carl, if we uh, if we win, if we win it, well, yeah, if we if, if, <laughs> if the Jazz ever win a championship, Danny Ainge get a statue with like his NBA number retired, <laughs> the Jazz Raptors, even though he never played on the Jazz. Oh, that'd be so funny. That so, would be hilarious, wouldn't it? It really would. It really would. Gosh. Well, yeah. So Jazz, I mean, really, you gotta love some of their young core. I don't even know who's on the Jazz. I need a. I mean, yeah, yeah. See, like, I and, know the names of the players, but I don't know anything about the players at this point. And it's kind of stinks because this goes to like all sports teams, I guess. For me, not being in Utah, I can buy like the NBA package and basically watch most of the Jazz games because right. I'm not in the region. But you being in the region, it's I like, can't even watch why it. would you even? Why would you even buy the package? Yeah. You know, why are you going to buy the package? Why are you going to go? T- games you don't know anyone you don't really care right you can't even watch the games anyways unless you buy even if i bought the nba league pass i still wouldn't get it because of exclude because att sports sense has exclusive rights yeah that's what i mean that's my point is there's no point for you to even like try to watch these games i don't know whereas before i felt like you're gonna we're gonna do whatever it takes to to get the games on right like whatever that means the Jazz have one nationally televised game this year. Only it's, one. It's a, the Jazz versus the Knicks because everyone thought Donovan Mitchell was going to play. <laughs> so now, now I'm thinking, like, why in the world would I watch the Jazz play the Knicks? Like, <laughs> But they thought that, that Donovan was going to go to the Knicks. Yeah, that's they thought he was going to that's the Knicks. funny. So, yeah. So now the that one really nationally funny, televised actually. game the Jazz have is against the Knicks of all teams. So, oh, I love that. I love that so much. So uh, after our last episode, obviously, uh, mother was not very happy. So funny. So I I totally forgot we even talked about immigration. Yeah, I was I was totally like I didn't even real I completely forgot about it. They also mom sends in the family chat like I don't like whatever you know she says stuff and it's just yeah mom like yeah just yeah so my point that i wanted to bring up and uh for mom if you're listening to this uh we can always call her up if she wants to have a discussion the the thing that she 
I don't think she's wrong. So here's my point. I agree with mom in the sense that, yes, everyone should come over to the country legally, right? Yep. I am all for that. I agree. I want to stop illegal immigration. Okay. So that is my stance. Just so everyone's clear, right? Like I am against illegal immigration. Okay. Right. That being said, and this is what we were saying last time, as our immigration like laws and policy currently are in the United States, that is an unrealistic thing. It's just yeah. unrealistic, right? Yeah. Like, and not only that, it's unrealistic, and there are so many people that I want to come to the country because I want like, them to have jobs and I want them to have a better life and I want like our economy to grow because of them. Yeah that aren't able to because of how it's set up yeah my solution is hire more immigration workers specifically people to process applications right so instead of hiring eighty two thousand irs people let's hire eighty two thousand immigration people that are going to be processing applications second thing we need to do away with the same number of quota per country totally have it really on a merit base or point base. So like I am a student, right? Or I'm a professional in these specific fields or I'm doing this or I'm coming to this state or whatever it is, right? However, like the states want to incentivize it and specifically the country, however we want to incentivize it, depending on the type of workers and the type of industries that we want to fill and need. Like let's get more people in here. But in order to in order to legalize, in order to help people come over legally, there needs to be more people processing applications, right? Like it shouldn't take a year to know if you can come to the United States. Right. Yeah. So if I submit my application, I should be able to hear back within three months yeah, if I'm going to be able to come or not. I, I, that's only reasonable to me. I agree. I, I think that that's my solution, right? So like, yeah. But until that happens, which is not going to, to say like, illegal immigrants are ruining our economy is just not true right they're actually it's, helping yeah, our economy yeah, it's, it's completely false i just being a missionary in the united states it's just like everyone i taught my mission was an illegal immigrant <laughs> and like the fact that none of them will ever become legal immigrants is absurd it is so dumb like i i hate it like it's it's just stupid and not everyone i taught my mission was an illegal immigrant but a lot of them were Mm -hmm. and like it's it's so stupid that they can never they will never have a prayer of ever getting like a legal status here does that make sense yeah Yeah. and uh, i'm just gonna look up some stats real quick as we're talking because last time i said in my opinion the vast majority of illegal immigrants are coming here for good reasons mom said that she doesn't think that's true right so when i say vast majority i'm thinking 70 plus percent oh i would i would venture 90 percent i'm okay with 90 percent too <laughs> at least 70 percent right? okay so, so let's vast let's, majority. Let's look it so, up. so if 8 million people came over here right so 8 million people come over um that means that 5.6 of the 8 million are coming over doing hard work participating in the economy helping so right. that's a vast majority that's 70 percent. we can say more but let's just say that like okay to say that it's not a vast majority then that means that there are five million people coming over here to commit crimes in the last four months five million right like i don't think there's five million members of organized crime in the united states <laughs> you know what i mean like of legal and illegal, like totally. Okay, so just so you know, there was so illegal immigration. So there's a study by the KO Institute. This is illegal immigration and crime in Texas. It's from okay. it's a paper from 2020. Okay, so a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago. Do you want to share your screen so we can see the paper? Uh give me a second. Okay, so new research on illegal immigration and crime. And what it says is this is the results are similar to, uh, to our other work on illegal immigration and crime in Texas. In 2018, the illegal immigrant criminal conviction rate was 782 per 100,000 illegal immigrants, 535 per 100,000 legal immigrants, 1,422 per 100,000 native born Americans. Okay. Okay. So, real quick, just so we're clear. That is less than 1% of illegal yep. immigrants 
are convicted of criminal yep criminal rates right so less than one percent and that percentage is less than natural born americans so than native born americans wow so let's see the only statistical relationship worth reporting is a negative association between total violent crime convictions and the illegal immigrate immigrant share with a point estimate of negative 0.104 that is significant at the five percent level this exception suggests that a 10 percent increase in the illegal immigrant share of the population is associated with a one percent decline in violent crime <laughs> So that means, okay, so that means that for every person, like every 10%, uh, like, so if there was, if there was 10 million so, immigrants, if there, another million came in, violent crime would decrease by 1%. And I wonder, here's, a <laughs> and here are the questions though. These are like the real, like, thing to ask, right? Are they committing less violent crimes because they don't want to be caught because they don't want to get sent back down? to yeah. whatever and maybe that's like an incentive not to commit violent crimes they don't yeah, want to exactly them, right? they like, know here's the thing like <laughs> what i learned about lots of immigrants in this country is just so you, like ice already knows who they are they already know where they're all living and they will not get deported unless they commit a crime because like, that's here's it. the thing here's the thing a lot of illegal immigrants are getting driver's license yeah they're they're, they're getting documentation right so when you get a driver's license, like what's your country of birth, right? Like, like you're you're marking that you're an illegal immigrant, right? Like, so it's not like we don't know where they are, like you said. We know where they're at. It's so to me, the whole idea that the majority of these illegal immigrants are coming over to commit crime is just not true, right? Yeah, it's not true. And then and like the for me, the fact that they we already know what they're doing, we know where they are. Let's just make them legal. Like they're not like they're not good. Like let's not make it like them scared to do anything or get caught or whatever. You know, like they're here. Just yeah. let them stay here. And so my point is, okay, we're gonna give eighty two thousand people jobs. Let's give eighty two thousand people jobs of processing these papers. Let's get people in the country legally. Let's get everything in here legally. Let's get people contributing to the economy. Excited about the United States. You go to any fast food restaurant right now, like any of them, they all need workers, right? Yep. They're all understaffed. The service industries are all understaffed. And a lot of those jobs typically are immigrants and teenagers, right? Yep. So that's totally. like the typical workforce in those in those fields. And right now, immigrants and teenagers, one, teenagers aren't taking a lot of those jobs anymore. Nope. And then immigrants aren't taking the jobs we don't have enough of them right so we don't it's just i don't know i think that though that's my take on it that was my immigration repose i just wanted to clarify i am all for making sure that there's no illegal immigration right i'm yeah. anti-illegal immigration but i am also anti the way the immigration system currently is yeah. and i think i think i can be both right like i i think that because I'm admitting that it's super flawed right now. Oh yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm the same way. I'm anti illegal immigration, but I'm also anti current immigration. Like, like the way it works, it's so stupid that yeah. it's. Well, and this is my issue, though. This is the issue that we have in politics. Is politics make these hardline things where if I'm a Republican, you're anti-illegal immigration oh we can't have illegal immigrants right and then democrats on the other side are like no we need to have immigration people need to come in the country but it's like none of them are talking about the actual problem right of like of our immigration policy is right? stupid like, that's the it's issue so dumb. like yeah it's just dumb so and then it's just it's just funny because and it goes back to technology where anytime technology is advancing people lose jobs right? Like people lose jobs. Technology makes things more efficient and people lose jobs in the short term. But in the long term, those same people gain jobs and more jobs are created in the economy because of innovation, because of new needs that we didn't even think of, right? Yeah. And this it's, is a, normal... it's a principle called creative destruction. Yep. It's a normal thing, right? Like this is super normal, happens all the time. It's the yeah. same thing with immigration, right? We think, oh, we can't have these immigrants come because they're going to take our jobs. 
They might take some people's jobs, yes, right? But it's only better for the economy because they're going to take jobs that most people aren't willing to do for that price. So they're yeah. going to come in and they're going to provide a service at a lower cost. Which yeah, so the, your cost of goods are going good to go down. Exactly. So now as a, as a whole, we're all benefited, right? Yep. So like instead of having McDonald's have to pay all their employees $20 an hour, right, or $25 an hour, right? And now my McDonald's burger goes up two bucks. Now they're able to pay their employees ten, $10 an hour with these immigrants. And my cost for my burger went down 50 cents instead, yep. right? And so like I'm benefited from that. So unless I was trying to get that same job that that illegal immigrant was trying to get and they took it from me, right? Like I have no qualms with with illegal with immigrants coming over, right? Right. And to make it where they can come over legally. Yep. And uh and to be honest, most of think about all the immigrants that have come over to the United States that have changed the world. I say changed the world in tech companies, right? That provide yeah, totally. technology for us that work for United States based companies that now my life is way better because they came to the United States. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. So that's a, <clears throat> that was just the wrap up I wanted to bring up on illegal immigration. because I just thought it was an interesting and funny thing, but I mean, if anyone has a disagreeing point, we can you're, talk to you next time. Yeah. You're welcome to disagree. Tyler yeah. and I are certainly no, ex we're not experts in, immigration policy no we just both feel that the way it currently works is really dumb yeah so, so someone explain to me why we can't do that like why we yeah. can't someone explain to me why we can't have more people processing immigration papers right why can't we have it easier why can we why can we create a system where it automatically like rejects or pushes someone up to the next thing just through computer systems Right. Yeah. So based on the information you put in, spend all the money just to create an advanced algorithm that yep. processes every application and approves or rejects, and you know, and like, maybe not even approves or rejects. Maybe it just rejects or pushes on. So it it automatically rejects if like X Y Z. That's an automatic rejection. Everything yeah. else pushes on. So now the people, it's just one less step for people. They don't have to even look at that. We know it's already passed this first stage. Now we're gonna look at the other. <laughs> the other factors of it right let's right. save some let's save some manpower and some time like why can't we do that right why can't we process more immigration why can't we why can't we do that it, do we not have enough space to to handle more people in the united states are we running out of space are we running out of food right are we running out of resources no we're not so like that's just it's, it's funny to say or think we are yeah now if we were in Europe right now with resources that might be a different story when it comes like food and stuff but well but, I mean Europe is Europe has an energy crisis yeah they're kind of they're kind of uh it's gonna be an interesting couple of months yeah. yeah so have you been are you caught up with Rings of Power and House of Dragons I am not are you I am yes I am so are we you not can... caught up with either of them neither or okay so we will skip we'll skip house of dragon and rings of power are you are you liking the shows more yes i think that yes i think i like house of dragon right now a little bit more than rings of power okay like this last episode i thought was really good and it's house sad the dragon it's sad because a lot of the characters now, this was their last episode because there's the they're aging time up. gap. Yeah, they're aging up. So like those, the I see, when I say characters, I mean the actors and actresses and mostly actresses that are playing those characters are now going to be aged out. Um, And so that's kind of sad because uh, a lot of them are good, but it's, it's, it's fun right now because it's like Game of Thrones. Like you can see the plots and the intrigues starting to to happen and meld okay. and like everything is about to start coming to a head yeah and so that's really really exciting and fun so i'm i'm enjoying the house of dragon rings of power i'm really enjoying as well and i think that this is not giving anything away because i don't even think he was in this episode but 
I don't think the person that came the asteroid, I didn't, I no longer think it's Gandalf. Okay. Okay. So, and I don't even think he was in this episode. So I'm not like giving anything away. I've just been watching other videos about other theories and I don't think that he's Gandalf. Got it. So. So, I mean, I had a long conversation with Matt last week because like we're we both been watching rings of power and just and we've talked about this just yeah i don't think it's bad but me me and matt want to agree with that our biggest issue is just the the timing of everything is just it just is off yeah so. yeah that's true that's a fair that's a fair point like with Numenor, no problem with Numenor being in the show. It's totally fine. But like the wraiths should already exist. And no rings go to the Numenorians. Just just say it. So when when, <laughs> when a couple Numenorians get rings, you're gonna be pretty When mad. a couple Numenorians get rings, you'd be like, well, of course they are gonna get rings, but they really shouldn't, because the wraiths already existed. These were these rings were already added out. <laughs> <laughs> but hey. I mean, yeah, it's whatever. It's fine. So, you know what bothered me a little bit? All the different streaming service. Everyone and their dog has a streaming service now, yes. right? And it's really annoying. And it's really annoying. So was it our, so what you you charged me $53 for the HBO thing. Yes. So that means the annual subscription is $169. Yes. $159. Yes. Okay. That's a lot. Dude. I know. I think I think I could have got it. Like, I think they had different deals. That was just like, it already had charged me, right? So it's like, boom. Like, I didn't even rem- I couldn't even remember when we were getting up for it. Yeah, I, I figured, like, it's got to be soon. Because I remember you got it, like, around this time last year. And I was excited because the Matrix movie was coming yeah. out. Yeah. But That's what, and that Dune, was one of the reasons Dune got was it. coming out. Dune, yep. That was the other thing. So I was excited for that. But. Yeah. So it was, yeah, it was like $169 or whatever it was. And it was, it was a lot. And so. But now we have so it. Another- that's more than, that's more than like 14, that's like $14, $13 yeah, a month. Lot. Right. But yeah. uh, when we divide it between the three of us, it makes it a lot more reasonable. It's like five bucks. Yeah, a month, much more and HBO I'm okay with because there's a lot of content on HBO that I enjoy right that i want to watch so that's fine what bothers me is when like a streaming service has one show i want to watch nothing else on there that i even care about and i want to watch the one show so we get the streaming service or let's say take this for example we didn't get the streaming service we borrowed the account from a family member right that has that streaming service so then we have the streaming service and they're paying like five bucks a month for it and we're using their account and there are ads. If you want to take me off, make me pay for something and then throw and still ads. Still give me ads. Yeah. Give me ads, right? Like, what the heck? This should be free. Like, you're what making you money for? on the ads. Like, yeah, what am I paying for? Like, I'm literally paying to be able to access the content. And you would think you would want me accessing the content, right? Yeah. Super annoying. So then I'm like, well, how much does it cost to get rid of these ads? Right. So it's <laughs> $5 a month for free with ads not free it's five dollars a month to access the content and you get ads and the ads are like every five minutes you get a 60 second ad it's super annoying dude hulu it's like two minutes of ads i know and hulu is (laughs) that's so annoying with hulu and it's not just hulu though this is not Hulu that i'm talking about this literally happened to us today so today i i we texted the family member like hey can we upgrade it to the ten dollar a month one that's ad free we'll pay you five dollars a month so you your payment goes doesn't change you're still paying five dollars a month we'll pay you five dollars a month too we're only going to need it for like two months because then our show is going to be off it anyways and we're not going to care about it um but it's just crazy that just bothers me right so then you're paying five dollars a month for for peacock and ten dollars a month for netflix and thirteen dollars a month for hbo and seven dollars a month for hulu or whatever right and it's just really really annoying annoying and what's funny is at the end they used to tout it where oh well you can 
get rid of all your cable and you can just get these services and you're going you're gonna to save money. But now if you want to watch things, it's almost with all the different streaming services, it almost is as much, if not more than it would be for your normal, for your normal, like cable bill, that cable yeah. bill to have all the channels anyways. Yep. So I don't know. It bothers me. It's pretty annoying. Although I wish that every streaming service offered an annual subscription, like at a discounted rate, because then I would just do that. I, I hate that's one that's nice about Amazon Prime is like I like that how the, all the services I get with Amazon Prime that I can just pay for once a year. Yeah. So I wish every streaming service was like honestly, every service should offer a, a yearly plan. Like just yeah. pay for it for the year, you know. Why would they not? I don't understand that. I don't understand why you wouldn't want to get an annual amount like, oh, this is really nice. We don't have to worry about them canceling every month. We can just, hey, they already paid us. This is great. And most of the time you cancel it. You're like, okay, you cancel it. You have access for the next year, right? It's like you don't like refund them. You're not like giving them their money back. You just right. you have access for the next year. Yep, and then that's how it is. It's like you would think that they would be much happier about doing that, right? I don't know. Um <clears throat> Amazon's great though. The amount of services you get with Amazon Prime. With Amazon, it's like the most worthwhile thing. It really is. Yeah. You I want that video. You get Amazon Prime. You get Amazon Photos. Like you get delivery to do. I don't even know what I pay every year. I have no idea what it is. They just up their prices to one forty a year. Like I said, I don't know. And to be frank, I don't even care. Like whatever it is, <laughs> I'm gonna pay for it. Like it doesn't even matter. Like how much it costs. Like it's getting. I'm gonna pay for it. See, it's funny. Charlotte's like, well, I can't believe we pay for this. I'm thinking, what do you mean you can't believe we pay for this? It's like, hey, it's like amazing. <laughs> it's like the one thing I'm really happy to pay for. I, mean, I know. Okay. <laughs> that, is one, that is one service, though, where we should, like, bundle our services. Like, why don't we combine our Amazon Prime? Dude, I don't know. I don't know either. That's one thing. Mine, because mine, I, I, use all my, I use my Amazon credit card. Yeah, I get five percent cash back on everything. Yeah. So I just like accruing tons of points. So I'll give you my Amazon account, sure. And you can buy stuff on my Amazon credit card and just pay me back. And <laughs> I was just, you can have multiple cards on the account. So I you know. can say like you can say like oh I'm I know I'm, I'm I'm cracking a joke. But no, you yeah. can actually make a family account on Amazon. Like Charlotte's on my family. Yeah, well, like Alex's dad, like all of the kids are on his account. Yeah. But then I have my own because I've always had my own. I think like when we were students, we got it for free or we had it for like it's half off for students. So, yeah. yeah, I think I've like always had I've always had one. So it's been great. Dude, I got to say about Will Time real quick. Charlotte just started book 14. Oh, wow. She's, she's, almost on, she's on the last book. She just started mm -hmm. today. She's so excited. For me, I just finished book seven. So I'm now she's like at the end, I am firmly halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> I am I've gone through half the books and then yeah. And so also today I realized that so today what's going on so like right now it's not Comic Con because we can't call it Comic Con, it's like Fan X, whatever. It's a big fan convention. It's like Comic Con, but it's not Comic Con. And so, like, you know, tons of we're driving down downtown Salt Lake today, and there's like tons of people dressing up. And I remember a few years ago, me and Matt went to this thing called Dragon Con. It's like, and we went there because Sean Astin was doing a panel, and we yeah. like once he's the guy who plays Samwise Gamgee, Lord yeah. of the Rings, and Rudy, you know? Yeah. We're excited for that. So we decided to go. And then today, not today, a few days ago, I realized I was looking up stuff about Will Time and Robert Jordan. And Dragon Con started because of the Wheel of Time. That's why it's called Dragon Con. Because like, the, and it just clicked to my head. So today we're driving down, down downtown, so like all this stuff. I was like, you know, Sean, I went to this thing called Dragon Con once with Matt a few years ago, and he's all about the Wheel of Time. Like that, it's not about Wheel of Time, but it's, it started because of the Wheel of Time. Yeah, it's just no fan convention thing. So she's interesting. So she I didn't mean, dress up. She's she's loving it. She loves it. Yeah. She she actually wants like we want the physical books now because she like kind of wants to read through them. 
So has she been listening to it then, or has she been reading on like she's, Kindle? She's been listening to it. Oh, Got it. Okay. Got it. Um, they're so good, honestly. It's, yeah. And I'm listening to this series right now. It's a sci-fi series. It's called The Expeditionary Force. One of my favorite readers is reading it, so it's enjoyable. R.C. Bray is the reader. Dude, yeah, the guy in uh, he's commune. the dude in the commune stuff. Yeah. The reader, incredible. Love R.C. Bray. Like, I will listen to books. Like, when I'm thinking of a new book I want to listen to, because he is the reader. So, right. Oh, he's the reader. I'll listen to that book. Like, oh, it must be a good book. Yeah. Or well, at least I'm going to enjoy his reading of this book. Right. And the series is, I the first book, really enjoyable. The second book, enjoyable as well. And the series overall is enjoyable, right? Like, it's a fun series. I'm enjoying it. There's going to be 15 books in this series, right? That's freaking crazy. I know. And he, he's written them really quick. So, like, these 15 books have come out in a, in a period of, like, seven years, right? Okay. So, it's just like, boom. He's just writing all these books. The only thing about this, and this is what makes Wheel of Time, I think, amazing, is it's the same plot in almost every book, right? And the dialogue and just the dynamics are, like, the same in almost every book right it's like destiny's crucible the first four books are literally like the exact same every single book yeah and like and it's like the same the same conflict the same interactions the same gut-wrenching decisions that the, the main character needs to make and for me i'm at a point where i'm on book eight right of these 15 so i'm like pretty invested and i'm just ready because there's so many questions and things that you want to know how the story ends but like all of the stuff in between that i don't like i'm i'm over it at this point i'm just i'm i'm done i get this this and some of that makes it fun but some of it i'm just like we've had eight books of this character being the exact same it's been four years of this character that's kind of the time period or whatever you would think he would have developed and grown a little bit more. You would right. think he would care a little bit more. And finally in this book, I do feel like the authors realize that a little bit and he'll, even in the writing, will make jokes about it, right? Where it'll say, oh, I, yeah, it's the same problem over and over. We keep having to deal with, right? Like, and, <laughs> and like, yeah, it's true. And it's funny, whatever. And I'll laugh. But that's what makes Wheel of Time so great is, yeah, it gets repetitive. Yeah, there's like a lot of dense, descriptive things in, in Wheel of Time, especially in those middle books, right? So we <laughs> can get like, okay, I'm ready for like, let's push this story along a little bit. <laughs> but you, the story is always kind of moving forward, yeah. right? And these characters are always developing and becoming who they need to become to like be the person at the end, you know? And that's, I think that's just really, I think it's hard to do, right? Yeah. It's, not, it's not easy to to write like that. And that's what makes it such an amazing series to me. But yeah, yeah. Destiny's Crucible is a perfect example. So imagine Destiny's Crucible, if there were 15 books, 15 books of this, right? Well, you know, now book eight is, is coming out. Like the audiobook's coming out in December. I just pre-ordered it on my Audible. Uh-huh. And so I'm like, I'm because you know, book seven ends with like the watcher, like with Joseph Col- Joseph seeing the wa- watcher and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's a series where like I love the premise of that series. Yeah, it's cool. Like, it's a cool, so cool. And that's why I, I wish that you would have like made the Tangled Road to Justice a series. Oh, well, I think like, it's supposed like, to be, but he hasn't he hasn't written anything else for it. But right. I love Tangled Road Justice. Again, that author, I think he was uh Olin Thornson I think he he retired and just like I want to write a book and <laughs> wrote his book and just really cool cool concept of and that's what kind of motivates me right with it that makes me want to read it is the world the questions the whole thought behind it it's really really fun yeah, but you know what book's never coming out is the winds of winter Game yeah of never Thrones. never that will never come out and no one should read Game of Thrones for the simple reason, you will never get a resolution to that story. I started it like a year ago. The first book is the best book. So I that, started a year ago. I would say that's the only good book. But I started a year ago and I was like, I got like one chapter in and I thought, why am I going to listen to this right now? Like, 
I refuse to listen to the whole series is out because I don't want to get into it and I don't want to waste days and days of my time listening. Right. So I stopped and I haven't I haven't tried and I, I won't listen to it ever unless the whole series comes out. See, that's probably smart. That's the right call. What you're doing is the right thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to talk for a sec. About... By the way, we still need to make lists of like our top TV shows. Yeah, I mean, week, we're like we're gonna do this. Let's just do it today. Let's do it right now. But I, before we do that, I want to talk about yeah. BYU football. Uh, because you want to talk about what BYU football? Okay. Because <laughs> I just what they're talking I, about. I just want to talk about how how i don't know why i get excited yeah, yeah. there's no reason to get excited ever for and something. the season's not over there's still a lot of amazing things that can happen we're a good team right and i think that being in the big 12 is going to be the best thing that ever happened for byu right because right. when you're in a big 12 or in a conference like that you can have one loss against a good team yeah and it's, it's not it's not the end level of the world, right right it's like how alabama because they're in the SEC, they can still lose a game. Yeah. Yeah, and if they win the SEC still, even with one loss, they're they're making it the playoff, right? And especially now they're going to be expanding the playoff, right? Um, one loss, two loss, fine, right? We win the Big 12, we're up there. That's fine. Yeah. Excuse me. Even the Big 12 is going to be amazing, right? So, like, we're a great – we're still a really good team, all of this stuff, I think I have lots of high hopes and high expectations for BYU. So right. everything I'm about to say, love BYU, excited about where we're going, excited where we're at. But it just sucks because you have such high hopes. You're like, oh, we're good. But, like, you need to be perfect. You know, you need to win them all. Like, as an and they blow a huge loss. And then you so lose. And, no, it's not just that they lose. They yeah. lose in, like, a the worst way possible. Yeah. And especially after a great win against Baylor, right? Yeah. Great win against Baylor. And, like, it's okay if we lose, but, like, let's lose competitive, right? Let's yeah. lose within a touchdown. Let's let's make this a really good game where it's like, oh, well, Oregon's actually a lot better than we thought they were, right? And Oregon's a great team, so don't get me wrong. Oregon's a great team, but it's just always – I don't know why. I don't know why I'm a fan of any team. I just think I just need to jump on a bandwagon of like a team that just always wins so I can feel good. But then it wouldn't feel as good when you win, you know? Like if you you ever does do anything great, it's gonna be amazing. No, that's why that's why ever since watching the four falls of Buffalo, which is probably <laughs> the best 30 for 30 ever. Yeah. Like you you've seen that, right? Yeah. I'm literally crying as I'm like watching the four falls of Buffalo. Like so, ever since then, I'm like, I like the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, they're they're fun, and now they're like the best team in the yeah. NFL. <laughs> like, just yeah. hop on the Bills bandwagon, dude. I'll tell you, Josh Allen, like, totally, like, I was not a big Josh Allen fan when he was getting drafted. Right, I was just like, uh, I think he's a little overrated, overhyped. He is incredible, right? See, I think the best quarterbacks in the NFL today are Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen. Like, yeah, I think that's the consensus pick. Yeah, most people Patrick, think that. Bad, Patrick Mahomes is like, I mean, Patrick Mahomes is amazing. He's like, yeah. he's so good. But then Josh Allen is just, he's huge. He's like six six or something. Well, like, and that that's what makes like for me Patrick Mahomes really incredible is because, like the Aaron Rodgers, the Tom Brady's, the Paytons, he has consistently been great. Right, yeah. like, and like that's he's never, yeah, he's never bad. It's it's hard to do. Like that's that's just so hard to do. You're in the NFL. You're playing against the best teams, and you're consistently amazing. Right, like yep. it's it's really really impressive. And Josh Allen's like that right now. In the last couple of years, he's been looking. Yeah. Last great. year and this year, he's been yeah. looking great. So, but uh, and he's a Wyoming kid, right? That like you know, know is that weird? That's what's cool about it. He played. <laughs> He played football in Wyoming. I know it's 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 pretty funny. So uh, as far as lists go, right? Uh, for for this list, I think I think it'd be really interesting for us to to make our lists. But do you want to do TV shows, movies, or a combination of just media in general? 
like you know, let's let's just do let's do tv shows today i'm just gonna do my top like five okay so top five tv shows brady's list do you have uh ones off off your mind right now your top I'm gonna, and i'm gonna we say need a, we need to preface this honorable, i'm gonna say some honorable mentions and these are honorable mentions first honorable mentions first they're great shows i love them but they don't crack the top five. Okay. So like the first show on my honorable mention would be Avatar Last Airbender. Okay. The cartoon. It's wonderful. It's so good. Okay. And definitely deserves an honorable mention. Like it's 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 one of the best. It's it's the it's the best kids TV show that's meant for all ages. Anyone <laughs> of any age can enjoy watching the show it is short it's three seasons so self-contained it's not it's not five seasons it was three seasons oh why did i think it was five no it's really short each season's 20 episodes it's great okay the next one i'll mention i'm gonna say is the office like i i, I, I will mention because it's one of the best comedies ever mm-hmm. but like this the quality drop off in the last two seasons is so sharp that like I can't I can't put it in my top five. Okay. Then the most re- so let's I want you to give a rating on uh, let's go one to five. Okay. Five being like the amazing, I can watch this show over and over and over, and I'm never gonna get sick of it, and I love it. One or zero being like I like had to finish the series just to say I finished it, but like I like had to pull my eyes out afterwards. Okay, so I'm gonna give both of those a four. Okay. And the last show on my honorable mention list is Shit's Creek. It's hilarious. That's also a four. I don't really need to get into like all about Shit's Creek, but it's a wonderful comedy. It's great. Yeah. So by number five okay. of all time is a comedy. It's Seinfeld. Number five, I think, is my fifth favorite show ever. It so is these to be clear. This is not like greatest shows of all time. These no, this is not greatest shows. shows of, this is my favorite shows. Okay, so objectively, Seinfeld is not the greatest show ever. Yeah, so that's I want to make sure we're clear on that. So people are like Seinfeld, I can't believe you say. So this is Brady's top five shows that you enjoy the most. Yeah, and what's your rating on Seinfeld? Seinfeld is I would honestly give Seinfeld like a four and a half. That's high like, for there's, you because. There's, there's some there's some episodes where it's like a perfect five. I think I've been like, watching Seinfeld like when just Alex and I when we just need something to to play. It is so funny. See that's why that's why it's number five for me. It's because it's never a bad time. Just put it on if you need something to put on, or you want to watch something that's light or whatever. It's the perfect show that you can just put on. It's always funny. You're never like not entertained watching it. And it is so true. People have said this about Seinfeld, and it's very true. If they had cell phones, so many of their issues would be solved. But right. the their the comedy when it comes to like human nature and human beings in social interactions is still the same, right? Like the way we think and talk and talk about dating and 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 life and jobs and everything, like. It's still, we're still human beings. We're still the same. And that's what makes it still so funny. Yep. So that's my number five. What's your, let's start with now. Let's go to you. So you can go with honorable mentions, then your number five. Okay. So I'm, I'm writing these down, by the way. So I have them when I, uh, when I compile our, our, uh, our list together. Right. Um, I think for me, honorable mentions for best tv shows for for me <laughs> i can't say it. it's it's this is not an honorable mention but this one came to my head when it it's uh the oc <laughs> and that is not by the way that is not an honorable mention but uh but i think for me one honorable mention i'm gonna say is gonna be suits uh, suits, yeah, I'm gonna add that into my list of honorable mentions too. But continue. Suits for me, and as soon as Mike leaves the show, I do think there was a decline as well. So I think it's the last two seasons of Suits. Uh, but Suits to me came out like right at the end of high school. 
so high school college and then like I finished while I was I think I got back from mission and stuff but just the dynamics between Mike and Harvey uh the drama of the law firm and just the comedy but also the seriousness of it it really just captivated me and made it was just really fun and cool and just I love suits love love suits so for me I'd probably give suits I'd give suits a four for me especially for like tv dramas uh I really really like suits I think another honorable mention for me is going to be game of thrones I can't put it on my top five because of how it ended right, right. and like I I just dislike the ending and specifically the last couple of seasons so much compared to the overall show, right? That I can't put it in my top five, but I still love the show, right? I love the first five seasons, right? The Battle of the Bastards, love all of that. I wish it had ended differently than I would be able to, it would be up there, but I still think that's going to be my honorable mentions. I, I think I'd give Game of Thrones a four as well. It would be way higher. I'd give it a much higher rating. If it weren't for like the last season, like, cause, and then that's so sad that like the last you never want to rewatch the show. I never, I don't, I just because don't, of, like, right? The last season. Like, it's just, it, it just is. And then I think my last honorable mention that I'm going to give. So I've got Suits, Game of Thrones, and then I think, I think I'll give The Office as my honorable mention as well. Uh, And the only reason I'm going to put it as my honorable mention is because I'm going to put Seinfeld as my number five, too. <laughs> well, I, I might put Seinfeld a little higher because Seinfeld, I, I love Seinfeld more than I love The Office, but I love The Office and I can watch The Office. And there's just episodes that just hit. Like you said, though, the reason for me it's not in the top five is because of the drop off once Michael yeah. leaves. Once Michael leaves it drops off and yeah, there was good. time like near the end where it was pretty funny and there were some moments and there was really funny but it was like once michael left it yeah, was it who are we right we didn't know who we were we didn't know what was happening and so it was a lot of kind of growing and coming into that so i would i would give the office for me a 4.5 because i love it so i'm gonna give it a little higher than you um but yeah that's that's also my honorable mention I mean, just uh, so I, everyone knows, too, I also started watching Seinfeld because Tyler started watching it first. Like, Tyler, you had every season of Seinfeld. Yeah. <laughs> and so then I started watching it after you watched it. And that this was, I was probably like a, I was either a sophomore or junior high school when I started watching Seinfeld. Because you were Chase, you and Chase started watching it. Yeah, Seinfeld is incredible. It's amazing. Like, me and Chase would watch it all the time our senior year. We just got really, really into it. And uh it's just really funny and great. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off on giving that my number five because I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna have it a little bit higher up for me than than so what's your five. actual number five. So I think for me, my actual number five is gonna be freaks and geeks. Okay, interesting. That's an interesting pick. It's not the yeah. it's not a wrong pick. Just an interesting pick. And the reason I'm going to give, for me, Freaks and Geeks number five is because, for me, again, I watched it, like, in high school. It didn't come out when I was in high school, but, like, I watched it when I was in high school, like, my junior, senior year, that time. And it's only one season, and it's got all the big names of people. And it was just such an amazing show for me at that time of life, where now I can, I'll, like, watch it again. And just love it because I'll remember the first time I watched it. Does that make right. sense? And like me watching it the first time, you're going through the same things that these kids are going through, right? In a different way. Like not all the problems are the same, but like you're growing up, right? You're coming of age. So for me, coming of age TV shows that are funny, but also like deal with like problems that you as a teenager face, Freaks and Geeks was the one that like for me just hit and made sense so now when i watch that i'm like i remember how i felt at that time and it just brings me a lot of joy and reminiscing and i love i've always loved coming of age so i'm gonna give that and i'm gonna say freaks and geeks for me is gonna be like a 4.5 um one season 
it might I might not have said that if it had more seasons, to be honest. <laughs> because I don't know if it could have like been great all the time. In such a way where I don't know if it still would have maintained the same quality. I don't either. And so <laughs> because so it's only one season, I'm okay like having it there because it was one, it was great. And it's like that cult classic of Freak Sync Geeks. So that's my number five. Okay, okay let's go to your number four then. Okay. Then we'll come back to me. You want me to do my number four? Yeah, then I'll do my number four. So for my number four then, I think I'm going to say... I think I'm going to say Lost. <laughs> I think I'm going to say... And I people like don't like how Lost ended... I did not mind it. I actually liked it a lot, right? And That's Lost, cool. Lost was a fun show for me because I didn't watch Lost when it come out came out. Lost had already come out, and I watched it in college with my roommates. Right, Gavin loved Lost. That was like his favorite show. So we like right. watched it together, and not just me and him, but like our whole roommates. We watched it, and I would like watch it. And I've since then I've watched it multiple times, but it's just a really like. For that time period of show again, just like really interesting story. You get stranded on this island. You have to survive. There's people. There's intrigue. What's going on? You don't know. And then the way it ends, right? Like I, I enjoyed the whole thing of Lost. Like the whole show, every season there was a conflict that I was excited about. And they left you on cliffhangers like they did. And then like I felt like they actually wrapped up the show in a way for me where I was really satisfied. Like right. to me, the whole series itself wrapped up and told the story in a way where I loved it and enjoyed it. So I'd say Lost for me is my number four and a 4.5. Okay, so for me, my number four, you know, you what you said about Seinfeld, I'm actually going to swap mine. Seinfeld's going to be my number four, so I'm actually going to say my, my true number okay. five. My true number five is actually going to be Friday Night Lights. Okay. What is that going to be hot on your list too? That's on my list as well. But yeah. <laughs> so here's the, Friday Night Lights. Every time, like that's a show I can literally watch over and over and over again. And like every time, I will cry at the same moments every single time in the show. Like it is, there's like that show is so good. And also, like everything about it's great, except yeah. for Julie is probably the most annoying character. She's probably up there, like one of the most annoying characters in all of television ever. Yeah, but, like, everything else besides really is great from the music to like everything that happens and it's it's just a wonder it's a wonderful show it's it really just hits you hard like there's so many times like where it just hits you hard where it starts off you know like the star quarterback who's best friends with the sophomore i guess who's just gets drunk Tim Reagan, time, sleeps around <laughs> So so good, honestly. What would you give Friday Night Lights? As Friday Night Lights is a four and a half. I say Friday Night Lights is four and a half. Okay, yeah. Okay, so that was your that was your number that was your number four. Yeah, right. That's what Friday Night well, Lights is number, number five. five. Seinfeld, Seinfeld number, number four. four. So then we'll talk. Number we'll three. talk more about Friday Night Lights when it gets to you on your list. My number three, and I can say this because the nature of the show is different, is True Detective season one. So you're going to say, yeah, you can say that. That's true. It's because every season is completely different. Does that make sense? Like you don't, yeah. it doesn't follow the same characters. Yeah. Or anything like that. True Detective season one is, is probably my number three. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm actually going to give you like a five. Wow. Okay. Like, like I, a five, just so you know, isn't like a perfect show. Like it doesn't mean there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. But like, for me, anything that is wrong with it is like a, I forget about or whatever. Does that make sense? Like for Friday night lights or Seinfeld, there's some episodes that like, or there's some moments, Julie being the biggest thing for Friday night lights, for example, that she's really annoying. And like, it's just hard for me to like, always like, let go of that. But true detective season one is just like such a great drama with so much intrigue and stuff that I just think, I think it's like a perfect show that a perfect season. It is a really, really great season. Um, for me, my number three is going to be Friday Night Lights. Yeah. And Friday Night Lights, I'm going to give a 4.8. Now, I give it a 4.8, and some people might think that's a little high. There are some slow moments, some slower seasons. I get all of that, right? And I get, like, the plot holes of 
Tim being a sophomore, right? Like all that makes sense. There's also a compelling character. You want him in the show. Yeah. They right? purposely didn't put an age on him in the first season. Cause like yeah. <laughs> Friday Night Lights to me, I we watch that like once a year, Alex and I. Like we will re-watch that show often because the characters are so compelling. And I think I'm actually I might need to take off Freaks and Geeks. Because I forgot about Friday Night Lights. I'm so glad you said it. I might have to move Freaks and Geeks to like my honorable mentions because Friday Night Lights is my favorite coming of age show, right? Yeah. Of, of high school, the drama, everything. The characters in Friday Night Lights with Coach Trailer and Tammy, right? And then all the people involved, like you see it all, right? Like you see it all, you feel it all, the emotion's real. And it's just the the community of like the whole town loving this football team and what that's like. It's incredible friday night lights is amazing right and the lessons you learn in friday night lights too like that they try to teach you like what it means to actually be a good person and also coach taylor and tammy's relationship and how they support each other but then also like when they have conflicts and like disagree and you see that and when you're a kid you don't even realize that and you kind of laugh but then as like a married couple you say like man it's crazy how kind of real this is but also you know a good way to 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 work through things and have a successful marriage. I mean, how much better do you think athletes would act like professional athletes would be? How much better of human beings do you think they would be if coach Taylor was their coach, whatever they were in high school? They would be, uh, they'd be pretty dang good to be honest. And uh, yeah, coach Taylor is incredible. Like simply, simply incredible. So yeah, he's just like the greatest. He's like the greatest mentor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he really is. For me, I think my number two is Seinfeld. Yeah, I so, mean Seinfeld. We talked a lot about Seinfeld. That's that's yeah. a worthy number two for sure. Again, time of my life, I can watch it a million times. I'm always I'm gonna laugh in every episode. Every episode is gonna make me laugh. Um, besides like there's a couple episodes where they show reruns i think it's like their 100th episode uh, right but i'm i'm gonna laugh i'm gonna enjoy it seeing it again as i'm a little older i say a little older versus when i was younger watching it and it's just crazy how kind of sexualized a lot of the content is right yeah <laughs> but like it's funny and it's great <laughs> so seinfeld i'm gonna give seinfeld a 4.5 as well i might give it a 4.8 actually Okay. So my number two, I think we might have the same number one, by the way. But my number two is actually going to be Arrested Development. The original run of Arrested of the first three seasons. Of yeah. Like for me, that was the first, that was the first comedy that like I got into on my own. Does that yeah. make sense? Like, like no one had told me about it and nothing like that. I just like, I was on Netflix. I saw it. I was like, I'm going to watch this. Yes. Like, and like it was just like it was really impactful for me watching it and just like how clever. So Rest of Development is really interesting because the jokes that come up in that show, like they will make jokes in season one that'll happen throughout the entire show. Like yeah. it's they like, did a good job with that. They really and did just a like good the job. The consistency between like the seasons, like in just the continuity is like it's perfect. I think the writing is awesome. All the characters are hilarious. Like I like it more than Seinfeld because it's it's shorter than Seinfeld. It's it's I, a different style of show too. I could put Arrest Development for sure on my honorable mention. Like you said that, and I was like, that show is really really funny. Now it's a different type of humor, right? Yeah, it's Arrested different. Development it's, it, is so dry. Yeah, so, exactly. So so dry. Like yeah, you gotta know you're watching a comedy sometimes. Like get the humor. You know what right. I mean? Because like, like also watching season one, like in the first episode, <laughs> there are jokes today that you cannot say, like that would not be allowed. Like <laughs> in the first episode, when the mom, I like when Lucille is like the homosexuals ruined my party, and like <laughs> just how terrible of a person she is. It is so funny, <laughs> but it is it's like it's great that is so funny like it's it is it, but the the quality of the comedy is consistent throughout the entire show yeah it's sense. it is and, funny it is funny through throughout it 
yesterday, yesterday, Charlotte and I are actually talking about this. Like, so she's going through themes. She's trying to make her phone all nice, right? Yeah. And on what the theme that she's going for, like, there's a picture of the creation, you know, like it's the Michelangelo thing on top of the Sistine Chapel where yeah. God got him to touch fingers, whatever. And so she can't look at that painting anymore without laughing because of the arrest development thing, where there's the whole pageant where every year George Sr. is God. And they recreate this little living portrait. <laughs> George Sr. is God and Buster is Adam and they do the they do the creation, whatever. And in the episode, George Michael like becomes like is Adam. And but George Sr. is like in jail and he's on the run. And so they unveil the portrait. And then it's just George Michael like doing it, but George Senior's gone. And this old lady's like, "Where is God?" And then the old <laughs> lady's like, there is no God. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like Funny. that, like that whole scenario, that whole setup, the whole writing of all that is so perfect. It just like it gets me every single time. I will think about like every episode of the show all the time and just laugh. Like it's it's so funny. That so is for me, so that's funny. my number two. Okay, so we both have said our number twos. What's your rating of Arrested Development? I would say like Arrested Development is probably like a four and a half or 4.8. I would, I don't think it's like, yeah. Okay. I would say it's like a 4.8. My number one, I think we have the same number one. Let's see, what is yours? Breaking Bad. Yes. Okay. And I put mine as Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul. Yeah, I so think... I'm I think you can do that. I have just so we just so we're clear. I, I've not seen Better Call Saul. I've I mean I haven't seen all of Better Call Saul. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I haven't seen the last season. Yeah. So for me, I'm gonna put him as one because I put Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Uh, that show is, and the shows together, just like the characters they created, their ability to make you love and hate these horrible people yeah just right, these terrible terrible human beings is is incredible and you're so you hate them you love them you're rooting for them you want them to fail you're like it's all of the emotions all the time right and there are times where you feel so bad for walt and you're like walt's like the worst person on the whole show right yeah, well, like, like wall wall is the epitome of evil like, yeah <laughs> and then there's times like Jesse at the beginning, you like feel bad for him, but then you don't. And then at the end, you're just like, Jesse's just, he just gets completely screwed. And you're just yeah. like, his life sucks. And, oh. and like when the way Breaking Bad, like when Breaking, when Jesse gets like imprisoned as like a slave. Oh yeah. Nazis, it's just like, like it is heartbreaking what happens, right? Yeah. It's so <laughs> messed up. But so, Breaking Bad, I'm going to give it a five. Yeah, I agree. Like, These are fives. I love, I love, love, love Breaking Bad. It is. And then for me, for Better Call Saul, even I haven't seen it. I actually think Better Call Saul is better than Breaking Bad for the simple fact, like it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be as good if Breaking Bad didn't exist. I think like, yeah. Better Call Saul was his own show. It would not be as good as I like, as high as I regard it. Yeah. But because Breaking Bad exists. It's like Better Call Saul is more exciting the entire show. Yes. Like Better Call uh, Better Call Saul does not have a slow start. It's like immediately you're you're like in it. Breaking Bad has a very slow start. Yeah. I think that uh you're absolutely right. If there was no Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul would not be as good. But because there is a Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul is incredible. Just incredible. And I love it. Yeah. It's amazing. I think there are a couple other kind of honorable mentions. And I want to give your take on these because these are kind of some of my honorable mentions after thinking about it some more. And I, I even wrote them down. But because uh, you mentioned season one, right? Uh, True Detective as in your in your thing. So Westworld would be, if I could just have one season, I think Westworld season one is like, it is the perfect season of a show. Like, and I put Westworld season one as my honorable mention as well. Because Westworld season one is amazing, right? Amazing. I also put uh, 
Mad Men. I don't know if you've seen Mad Men. I've not seen Mad Men. I really like Mad Men a lot. I actually really, really do. But for me, like near the end, I was just like, I'm I I'm watching this because I want to get to the end of the show, right? right? And less about like the actual show. Does that make right. sense? Because the so, main character again is like someone that you just like is it again love and hate. You just like love and hate this dude. So for me, other honorable mentions would be House of Cards. House of Cards in the early seasons. For oh me. yeah, like it's like it's the first two seasons are amazing. Season three, when Claire leaves, the season three ends with Claire leaving Frank, and like also so Kevin Spacey is a terrible person because like he he like abused all these young 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 boys his entire career whatever but like so putting that aside the first two seasons of house card are great the first the third seasons when like it starts dropping off because just the quality like just everything about it just got it got worse it did well it kind of felt less again less real in the sense of not real it's fake all of it but like the whole first two seasons they both cheat on each other. They both know that. Their whole point yeah. is we are going to become president. president. Yeah, like that's it, right? Everything we do, we are going to become powerful, right? And so for me, something important about House of Cards too is without House of Cards, Netflix, like that was the first That Netflix was it. Show. That started, that, that took was, Netflix off. Yeah, that um, was like, was like they had original programming before. But that was the first one where it's like this is like, this is like one of the best TV shows on TV right now. It's- yeah, rocked the House of Cards. A couple other ones that I would say honorable mentions are Fargo season one. Dude, Fargo's great. I'm glad you. Fargo mentioned- is amazing. Like, so good. That's like, like a totally another like dark comedy. Yeah. Where it is it is so funny? Like just the situations in there. Yeah. It funny, but it's like dark. And oh. I'm done in season one. I haven't seen all of Fargo, but I've seen, I think I've seen season, season one. Two. But I've seen season, season one. Season one is so good. So yeah. good. Um, love, Another love. show is The Americans. Have you seen Americans. The Americans? I love The Americans. Again, near the end of The Americans, I was like, I'm ready for this show to be over. Right? But right. The Americans is amazing. I think uh, Sons of Anarchy. I've not seen that one. So that's like a heavier one. It's really interesting. You gotta kind of be ready for uh just kind of a lot, right? Like a motorcycle gang, right? Like it's gonna make you wanna be in a motorcycle gang at the same time. But again, you're rooting for kind of these horrible people. And it, it's I really enjoyed it. Along so the there's, same, yeah. there's two there's two shows that that are not the same, but they both take place in Miami. That like they're like they're not very good but for me i really like enjoyed watching them they were impactful for me and i know you've seen i'm pretty sure you've seen both of them the first one's dexter yeah and then burn notice did you ever watch burn notice i did i watched both of those like burn, dexter like, dexter i got through like season five or whatever i can't remember how many to- i didn't finish all dexter because again i was like i'm a little over this right dexter but like the first couple seasons of Dexter, fantastic, really, really interesting, great. Burn Notice is another really fun one. Um, yeah, it's just like a fun show. It's a fun show. I think other shows I really enjoy. I love Yellowstone. Not, no, it's not done been. yet, so I can't put it on my list, but I love it. Um, what The Walking Dead, early seasons Ugh. of The Walking Dead. I haven't, I haven't like, like well, what a, what a roller coaster of <laughs> like just the cool, the amount of quality shift in The Walking Dead throughout like the entire run of the show. I'm going to talk so like, I'm talking like early seasons, like one through, I say early season, one through seven or whatever, <laughs> whatever had, one through nine, how many seasons it was, right? Where like when Negan is there and like up like through yes. Negan. So you're going all the way through season seven. <laughs> yeah, I'll say through season seven, right? We're like The Walking Dead. I thought it was just like I loved it. It was so good. Um, loved The Walking Dead, Mad Men. Uh, yeah, you know a show I really liked too, and it's kind of an interesting show, but it's Justified. Dude, Justified's great. Yeah, it's a and great show. if you've ever seen Westwood, it's an HBO. Uh, it's an HBO Western, right? I liked Westwood. 
I don't think Westwood's as great as everyone says personally. Like I like other shows better, but Justified the actor is the same actor in Westwood, and I like Justified. I enjoy Justified more so, than I enjoy Westwood. There's an important show that I left off my honorable mentions. Is also because it's not it's not over yet, but this definitely deserves like high up on my honorable mentions list is the Mandalorian. The Mandalorian is a great. This show. is like so. I luckily the Mandalorian, the Book of Boba Fett are different shows. Yes, I do not like the Book of Boba Fett. It was yeah. pretty boring. Yes, but but both seasons of the Mandalorian are great i think season one is better yes but season two is also great they're both great and like, what is an amazing show that like gets you super excited about star wars yeah and then you know, so like season three i watched the, there's a teaser trailer out for it it looks awesome i'm like stoked for it i think it's gonna be great and yeah. like that is i mean that is the best thing that Disney has done with Star Wars is the Mandalorian. The Mandalorian is incredible, honestly, just just incredible. I think uh, I have a light that shines yeah. on me, and it's like an LED type light that I bought for like ten bucks at like a Marshalls or something. Right, and it just went out. I've like left it <laughs> on a lot. Uh, I've had it. Oh, there, oh, there we go. Oh, it's I like, keep it on whenever I keep it on. I keep it on like full power. So let me like lower the power. Here, but... Um. But so I need to go back and buy another ten dollar light. But uh, that show is great. So <clears throat> real quick, as a recap, Brady, your top five, right? Number five, you came in with Friday Night Lights. Yes, that's my number, number four. Seinfeld. Yeah. Number three, True Detective season one. Number two, Arrested Development, and number one, Breaking Bad. Yeah. I are feel they, I feel good about that top five. Are there like, any like those are it? those are great. Like for everyone listening or watching, those are like, eh, like those are some of the best shows ever. Like can like the uh, you could pull a lot of a hundred people, and probably ninety five of them would say those are some of the best shows ever. Yeah, I they mean, they would probably not all put them in their top five. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, but like, just the joke because it's be like, yes, those are amazing shows. Yeah, yeah, totally. So for me, my top five, and <clears throat> I'm actually going to I'm gonna take out Freaks and Geeks from my number five. I'm gonna move it to honorable mention because after talking for me, I'm actually gonna put. Uh, I'm just looking at my list of honorable mentions. Like, which one is my number five, really? Yeah, exactly. It's like there's so many. Five, that I just... Number five is such a hard number where it's like it's cons. Like number one is pretty firm. Yeah, my number oh. one through four, I think, are pretty firm because those are shows that I will watch multiple times. I love the shows. We'll watch them. They're great, right? Yeah. Um, there are other sitcoms, by the way, that we haven't even mentioned in honorable mentions that I still think are like fantastic and great. Yeah, uh, but. My number five, I'm going to go, honestly, I've got to go with with Yellowstone. Yeah. I mean, I mentioned that last. I love Yellowstone. I love Yellowstone. Like, I love it. And it's a lot, right? But to me, it's like a Western Game of Thrones. If from the perspective of, I say Game of Thrones, from the perspective of the I guess, yeah, you could say this newer Game of Thrones, House of Dragon. Uh, but uh, the uh, Baratheon family, like Joffrey, their, their group, right? So when people are trying to take the power from them, and they're just like, from their perspective, hey, we're here, right? Like, this is our power. You can't take it. Move that to a Western. It's, a Western. it's Yellowstone. It's Yellowstone, and it's wonderful. Uh, I love Yellowstone. So it's not finished yet, so we'll see how it finished. I might move it down if it ends horribly. But, like, I get super excited about every episode. I love it. Four lost three Friday Night Lights. That was your number five. My number two was Seinfeld. And then my number one was also your number one of Breaking Bad. But then I've also finished Better Call Saul. So I threw Better Call Saul in there as well. I'd say that's a solid list. 
I do think that's a solid list. Um, I think that everyone with, with movies, my number one and my number two are so solidly set. Like they will never change. They will forever, never change. They will forever be. My yeah, well, I want to know what your number one and two are then. What's so your number, number, what's your number one movie? So my number one movie is the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Okay. Like like you have to treat the whole trilogy as one movie. You okay. can't like for example, you can't just watch Two Towers. And that <laughs> the movie, right? like, <laughs> okay. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> what's your number two then? Number two would be the the original Star Wars trilogy. The original Star Wars. Trilogy. So if I have to pick one Star Wars movie, it'd be it'd be Episode Five. Episode five is the greatest Star Wars movie ever made. And re-watching, so Charlotte and I, a few months ago, we went through episodes one through six. And the original trilogy still holds up great. And yeah. episode five especially is so incredible. It's just like you, I watch it, I wonder why can't every Star, like why couldn't every Star Wars episode after like be as good? Like I think episode six is great too, just so we're clear. It's yeah. just like why couldn't the prequel trilogy or the sequel trilogy keep up the same quality as the original trilogy does? Because but, they just didn't care as much. <laughs> so just so when I was so before the sequel trilogy came out, Star Wars the original trilogy was my number one. Okay. And Lord of the Rings was my number two. Okay. Got it. But then when the sequel trilogy came out, when Disney released all these Star Wars movies, I was forced to admit there are more mediocre or bad Star Wars movies than there are good Star Wars movies. <laughs> and so it was immediately, de- it had to be demoted from number one to number two. And Got so it. that made Lord of the Rings number one, Lord of the Rings number one, because there's the Lord of the Rings trilogy and there's that, which is amazing. And then there's the Hobbit trilogy was is not good. I would never rec- if it was gonna watch a Hobbit movie, watch the Hobbit movie animated. <laughs> the, the, anim- the animated, the animated movie, movie that came out like the seventies. That's really creepy, but it's like the perfect representation. The one of you it. watched in like fifth grade when you read the Hobbit. Yeah, like, when you read the Hobbit, like it you is- were so excited because you got to watch the movie. You're like, yes. But it's actually like if you watch it today, it's actually like pretty good. It totally follows the book really well. It's short, like the book is short, right? And me, so, by the way, I agree with you on number one being Lord of the Rings trilogy, right? We're gonna rewatch it once the whole series of Rings of Power is out. We're gonna finish Rings of Power, then we're gonna rewatch the the trilogy. Alex and I, the trilogy is amazing. Movies are tougher than to me to rate than TV shows because I feel like it depends the category, right? Right? Like I feel like I couldn't pick a number two just like movies i love because i love a lot of movies for different reasons and i don't know what would be my number two you know right. so i'm see, not me, i'm not going to pick a number two see for me it's just it's hard because like i've all you know i've always loved star wars yeah you I've have always, you really i've always have. loved star wars i've always loved lord of the, lord of the rings it's every other number after that like three through five or three through ten now or whatever where they are always changing. Like, especially because Charlotte hasn't seen some of my favorite movies. So as we rewatch like some of my favorite movies, I'm like, oh wait, that's actually like my my one of my that's my favorite movie after Lord of the Rings, whatever. What so, what movies have you been re-watching? So the most recent one that we just watched, Charlotte's like bawling the entire time in this movie. But I've watched this movie so many times where like I cannot cry watching it anymore, but I still am just like I'm amazed every single time I watch this movie is Interstellar. Interstellar is incredible. Dude, I, I saw Interstellar. The first time I saw it, I was with you. Has she not seen that? that? She had Until never seen that before. Wow. That's a great movie where I watched it again, like a couple months ago on a plane. And I forgot how good it was. And then like, I'm watching this like plane screen. I'm like, I think I might have cried a little bit because it's so good. Dude, so the, the first time I saw I was with you. It was 2014. That's when it came out. Yeah. And we went and we saw a midnight release and we went to IHOP afterwards. It's like three in the morning. We went to IHOP. And like, we're all, our minds are just blown. By yeah. The movie, right? Like the whole, how time like just jumped forward. Like it was crazy. Everything about yeah. the movie was nuts. 
and just the effects of it it oh, still dude. holds up it it's still incredible. holds up like you watch it today and you're like this is still amazing but watching it again the part where like so when when man is going to maroon them on that crappy on that crappy planet and he's trying to dock and then cooper's like do not try to dock don't dock don't dock he's not listening right and then it blows up and you just think it's over like it's it, it's done and my heart pounds every single time i watch that scene where he docks with the station and like what a great line where he's like he's like cooper it's impossible he's like no it's necessary it's like <laughs> that gets me every single time because he's just like yeah like what else what like what else are they gonna do they're yeah. literally stuck there they have yeah. nothing else to do like that movie i'm like want to watch it again right now like it is so good it is like i think that's probably the best sci-fi movie yeah i think i because I, 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 i'm gonna count star wars for example as like uh fan fantasy. fantasy it's sci-fi fantasy but because it's, it's more, more of a fantasy, fantasy when it comes about the story arc right the oh, way yeah. the there's arc. there's literal magic in yeah. the like so like pure sci-fi i'm gonna i'm gonna go with with interstellar like yeah. that, sh- that it's, movie is it's my favorite sci-fi movie ever it's so good incredible so so good so like uh, it's my favorite christopher nolan movie i like I know it's not his technical best movie, but yeah, like it's, but it is I my think favorite Chris. When it comes to Christopher Nolan movies, I love almost all of his movies. Yeah, all of his movies. But I'm trying to think of a movie I like better that I like better than Interstellar. Right, exactly. I love that's, Inception, but I don't like Inception better than Interstellar. That's right. That's what's like me is that I love The Dark Knight, and but I, I don't like it better than Interstellar. Exactly, but I don't love it better than Interstellar. Like Interstellar is always like. It's just, it's my favorite one. It's yeah. so good. And I just remember watching it and like literally bawling in the theater when he's watching the 23 years that have passed. And he's like watching the recordings. I'm like, again, you watch it and your mind's blown. He's like crying as he's watching his kids grow up. And he's just missed it. For him, it's been two hours, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and like, well, it's just, just like everything yeah, about right. that movie. That movie is like so good. I'm I'm like tear up thinking about it too, but like again, he's on this mission trying to save Earth. His daughter thinks he's abandoned her, hates him, whatever, right? Or still kind of has faith, whatever. Who knows? And the whole time her ghost was him, because time, right? And these black holes and all these things. And he gives her the secret. Yeah. He, he sends it to her, right? So he does, he saves the world through this, through this thing. Uh that's amazing right love it uh and then at the end when she's alive and super old and she's like the hero she solved the problem but like she knew she was like it was my dad i knew it was him the whole time no one believed me and uh just like that interaction and stuff and then just every you saw just so many different aspects of man right and him going crazy so he's the best of them but he went crazy and you see the girl right and her love is on a different planet and so she at the end goes off to there right to to try to save that but at this point so much time has passed for her yeah he's long dead yeah yeah it's just crazy it's nuts it's it's an amazing movie i like but watch so sean and i watched it a few weeks ago and it would just it just get it just gets me watching it. Dude, dude. It's good. I'm now like I want to watch it again. <laughs> Am I watching it? <laughs> um, what other movies have you watched with her? What's next on your list? What would be next on my list? Oh, so this is an old movie, but like this is my favorite western. Watching it is the outlaw Josie Wales. Classic, love dude, it. It is like. If you're gonna watch that though, you kind of have to go through like a whole like you're like I need to I'm gonna watch all Clint Eastwood westerns, you know what I mean? It's the best the best westerns I think are Clint Eastwood westerns. It is spaghetti also, westerns. His uh... yeah, but then also like dude, it's hard. Like there's movies that I really loved at the time, but I hadn't seen for so long that watching them again, like No Country for Old Men and True Grit, like these are like all some of my favorite movies ever. 
but like i haven't seen them for so long that like i forget that they're my favorite like some of the best movies ever yeah they're really good but then um, there's some really like, good westerns a uh, movie that she hasn't seen that like what i wanted to watch last year when dune came out which is this is my second favorite sci-fi movie is blade runner 2049 see what's crazy about that is that did not i was looking at different things that did not get good reviews dude it is it is like I what love is bad about that blade movie? Run- i loved blade runner 2049 i think that's an incredible sci-fi f- movie as well right like, I, just, I don't I know blade what's, runner 2049. what's bad about it like it's great like i think i know but like look it up real quick look at the reviews it got blade runner 2049 but she has not seen that movie yet so let's see imdb it's 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 an eight out of ten on imdb that's like really low for me for for rotten tomatoes it was 88 percent like so it's something about this so the first blade runner the first blade runner is considered like the bet like one of the best sci-fi movies ever blade runner for 2049 is like way better than the original blade runner like i get so bored watching the original yeah like oh my gosh what a slog fest but this like (laughs) (laughs) but this new one is great like i'm so like i get excited watching it and then like other movies that like she had seen before but like we've watched several times already is monty python and the holy grail i love that movie that's classic like one of my favorite comedies ever it is hilarious Oh that's my God. classic. I will watch it over and over again. Never stop laughing. It's so funny. <laughs> that's a classic. Well, yeah. what were you going to say? But yeah, I mean, let, let, give me more time to actually think about. Like, yeah. Well, let's let's next time, let's talk about our favorite movies, but let's do categories. So maybe let's talk the about. Categories would be easier for sure. So let's do like, a, we'll just go through categories and talk about our favorite movies in each of the categories. Uh, categories being like dramas, sci-fis comedies westerns right right and some interlap right you might have a western that's also a drama right but i mean or right. the comedy that's also a drama to me comedy comedies are tough because it's there's tough they're funny. such a wide like a huge expanse i think my movies. favorite comedy like if i had to choose one and it's so funny now but it just shows like how funny the movie is the other guys and what Dude. i mean it's funny right. that Parker will quote it all the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. And I used to quote it all the time, right? It is so funny. The other guys, I will like, I just die laughing every time that that movie. Yeah, I mean, there's so <laughs> many great, there's so many, the, literally the best moment in the movie is when they jump off the building. Yeah, at the very beginning. It's like, happened. what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> It's so early on in the movie. Yeah. You like get on this chase and you think like, oh, they're gonna get these people and then they die. And you're like, yeah. oh, <laughs> they're dead. Uh, but yeah, so like it's things like that that are that are just great. They're just oh, it's wonderful, so wonderful thing, wonderful movies. Okay. Real quick, well, sorry, there's one other movie that Charlotte watched. It's funny because all the movies that like I think are funny that I don't cry, like a comedy i don't think i i think it's really funny but i never cry in but we watch together you ever seen stranger than fiction yeah dude i love that movie charlotte was like bawling that entire movie like that that movie i'm i haven't seen it in a long time that's one of the will ferrell movies where it's like a comedy but like it's also a drama right it's also a little drama is the wrong word it's more serious yeah yeah yeah, um, we can we can talk about it later, but but yeah, that's hmm. Hmm. but uh, this is another long episode. Now that Very we long. now that we have our uh, our no time limit, it's like how long can we talk for? Exactly. <laughs> but uh, this episode for all those that are watching, if you made it to this part of the episode, uh, that means you had nothing better to do for the last what was it hour and a half? <laughs> hour and forty minutes almost. So. Uh, you need to find some other hobbies to, to take up your time. Talk. But we we talked about a lot of great things. This episode was brought to you by Show Ticks for You. That's S H O W. Was it actually I-X brought to you? Uh, brought, did they sponsor or the number four U, the letter U 
ticketsforyou.com, showticketsforyou.com for all of your online ticketing needs. Uh, they have yet to sponsor us. Oh, so it's not brought to you. So not brought to you. So not actually brought to you by, but could be brought we're, to you by. We're grifting very hard. I just think it's the running joke where we like always have to say it now, no matter what, because it's just funny for me. <laughs> Dude, I also got to say this episode is also brought to you by Vori. Love Vori. You should go buy Vori clothes. Oh, or- <laughs> how do you say it i don't know, I don't know. vori yeah vori right v-o-u-r-i yeah i want to just also say real quick the wordles lately have sucked yeah. Like, yeah today was fine today was like a like a normal word but like uh like past words were really dumb so i'm about to be able to do the wordle in one minute because it's t- eleven fifty nine where I'm at. Should I do it on screen right yeah, now? Do, do it on screen. Okay, so but don't do, show. Do not tell. I me won't show you. I won't show you. I'm just gonna. Um, I'm just gonna do it. On, I wish you, I could like do it, but like hide out my, my like letters. What I'm choosing, yeah. so you can just see. You know what I mean? The uh, yeah. just the the colors. But okay, it's twelve o'clock. Here we go. My account is open. I'm gonna do this wordle. Uh. If you have nothing better to do, watch me do the wordle. If you do have something better to do, but yeah, the last couple of wordles have been weird. Uh, like I'm gonna go with my one, first guess. My there's the one guess. where, there's the one where it was like the pair or whatever. I can't remember exactly what it was. Yeah, like was this, pair, pair. Yeah, the pair and like I didn't think that was a word. Yeah, I was. I literally like, only got it because I had P A. I didn't have the middle, but then I had E R on the second guess. Yeah, I, see, I, second did, guess, I did not get it. Like I, I think my second guess wrong. was pager. My second guess was pager based off of what I had. Right. And so I knew that everything else was right. And I was like, okay. And so I literally did like pager, paler, um, paper, paper. I like did everything. So I'm on my last guess. I'm like, I couldn't be anything else. I like literally put things in it. Like not a word, not a word, not a word. Okay. Let's try another R. Like he got it. Okay. But then my was first guess, one. by the way, my first guess today got zero, nothing, nothing. Guess one got nada. Okay, guess number two. So then there was also a word called trice. It was T R I C E. I'd never heard of that word before. I did get that one. Yeah, I did I too. Like I was like, this is dumb. Like, can we do? By the way, if anyone hears the cello, Charlotte's playing. She is in the Salt Lake Symphony. Everyone should come to see her perform in the Salt Lake Symphony this weekend. Uh, this I, on my second word, by the way, I got one yellow. So I have one of the letters, don't know the spot. Uh, I basically eliminated half the alphabet. How really, though, I really have. I'm like, what is this word going to be? So, yeah, Wordle. There's also another game. So there's a, there's a game that Spotify does, Tyler. It's called The Hurdle. Have you heard of this? There's no way. I got it on three. I I got it on three. There's, I love when you either get your first guess a lot of letters or your first two guesses you don't get like any because then it narrows it down. It's like, okay, well, these are the only letters I've got left. Let me send this to you, Brody. Now, now what I've got to do is I – Tyler, what was the word I got in one? Remember what I said? That was you? incredible. I don't know. No, you got it in two, I thought. No, I got it in one. See, I'll show you. Like, so for everyone can see. Uh. Oh, yeah. That was like, I didn't even believe you. I said, no way. Like, that cannot be even, that was, that's failed. That's yeah, failed. I literally, I literally got it. I just, it was the word I guessed, my first guess, and I got it. Wow. I know. It was like, it was nuts. Fake news. Fake news. But what, like, dude, I can't, it was awesome seeing it green, but it was also a little anticlimactic because probably you're like, the- now I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. That was it. I didn't even get to like figure it out. I just randomly guessed <laughs> it right. I randomly got it right. That's so, so real quick, there's a different game called the Hurdle that Spotify does. No one should play this game. Here's why. So wow. what it is is every day Spotify just makes it a random a random song. All right. Yeah. And last night, so it's at midnight. Last night. I literally got it in my first guess. I like I knew the song, my first guess from the you get like one second, 
the first guess you have one second to listen to it i knew what song it was immediately okay, okay? and oh, it I said i was hurdle. wrong hurdle yeah that like heard here yeah okay so, so i'm gonna it, let's, let's pull it up for today you ready let's uh share my screen let's pull up hurdle okay yours so this will not be the one i did yesterday okay because this is a new one this is a new day yeah so for you how to play listen to the intro find the correct artist and title in the list skip or incorrect attempts unlock more of the intro answer in as few tries as possible to share your score i don't know if i'm just like oh i think i think my bat my light was fine i think i was is coming unplugged okay let's play so i i hit play down here right yeah, you have to hit the play button. Okay, here we go. Da, da, da. So, like, real quick, I have to search the title. Yeah, I use like, I can't. Like, what is that? It's, it's uh, you can't hear it. No, I I, I can hear a little bit. It's a, uh, it's an eighty song. Um, play it again. Let me see if I can hear it this time. Da da da. Can you hear when I play this? Yeah. So this is a Nirvana song, okay? Like from the song from yesterday was Come As You Are. Okay. I guess Come As You Are. Okay. And it said I was wrong. So I go through the entire thing. I got it wrong. It's like, no, it was Come As You Are remastered. I wanted to because <laughs> I'm like, I guess Come As You Are is my first guess. I was so mad. Let's see. It's not crazy train, but like. It's Hold on, like... play it again. Tyler, that doesn't sound like an 80s song to me. From what I can hear. It's got like a humming in the background. I don't even know what. Let's add a second. Green Day. You think Green Day? I have no idea. I can't even hear it very good. It's not Green Day. There's no way. I wish it like gave me like. Is yeah, that how it goes? That's how it goes. I don't know. So let's skip ahead. Okay. <laughs> Two skips. I'm telling you, this isn't an 80s song. I know it's not an 80s song. Okay, let's skip ahead. <laughs> okay, I don't know this song. It's going to be a newer artist, it sounds like. I skipped again. Let's see. Billy Eilish. No, it didn't sound like Billy. This night is cold in the kingdom. I can feel you. I'm never going to get it. I have no idea. Yeah, I, I will not. I, I don't, don't even know who it is. Unlucky by Alec Benjamin. Okay. Uh, there's one other song. Oh, let me slow. This night is cold in the kingdom. I never, not in a million years. Yeah, would... I would have never gotten this. There, there's a movie one. What is the movie uh, Wordle? Movie Wordle. Framed. It was framed. Yeah. Have you played this? Yeah, you sent it to me. We have a helicopter flying. The day after tomorrow. You think so? I don't think it's the day after tomorrow, but we'll give it a go. I don't think. No, it's not even. That's not even an option. Um, Cloverfield. No, it's not that. What do you think it is? I didn't think for a sec because it's we've got the helicopter flying there. Avatar looks like greenery right here, but it, it's like a helicopter. It's not Avatar though, because yeah, they would have had a more futuristic ship. Hmm. 
I don't know. Let's give a first guess. Uh, Battleship. What was that? Battleship. <laughs> I mean, it could be Battleship. I don't think it's that, but... It can't be. Let's go with... Yeah, we can do Dark Knight, I guess. I'll look up the plane. Okay. So that's a skyline. So you have a helicopter and skyline. That's the LA skyline. You think so? I know that's the LA skyline. Maybe it's a rock movie where he like saves the world and he's in LA. Rampage. Um, point break. It's definitely not point break, but okay. I don't know. Helicopter flying in, coming into LA. Um, let's go with wasn't fast and furious. What about trying to think of like movies that are in LA where they're coming in with a helicopter. Dude, I don't know. Just just do a random guess so we can get another picture. Okay. Well let me see. Uh Let's put R. There are definitely uh, army people here. On a ship, someone's over them. Tropic Thunder. I literally was typing in Tropic Thunder right as you were saying that. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So we got it. La last game here. Look up wor world. Like the world. Then oh, yeah. Is that top one? All right. So we have to guess what country this is. Okay, so it's this a country is, or territory. This is a, this a tough one. Yeah, because it's like a circle. Yesterday, by the way, was Croatia. Ooh. Um, okay, let's give give me a guess. Give me like a a first guess. I'm trying to think real quick. I think it's going to be an Asian. Luxembourg. Okay, so we're not close. We are really far. It is in Asia. I, yeah, I mean. Give me a rant. Let's go with Thailand. What's Thailand? No, that's too far. Thailand. It's got to be in con mainland continent Asia. Do Uzbekistan. How do you spell that? U Z. Yo, we're still really far. It's southwest of Uzbekistan. Um, or southeast of Uzbe Uzbekistan. Um of Uzbekistan. It's not close. No, we're eleven thousand. Miles away, kilometers away to Do the southwest, southeast, it's southeast, southeast. Sorry, so it's either in the Middle East or is, is this the shape of Iran? That's not Iran. Is this you the can shape do of Iran, Saudi. No, is this the shape of? It'll look on the map. No, Maybe. don't look on any maps. <clears throat> okay, let's we'll do. Okay, I want you to What's get. What's a country next to India? Give me a name of a country next so to India. Nepal is a country next to India. So, yeah, do, do Nepal, sure. It didn't, it didn't show up. What's another country next to India? 
Um, next to India would be Pakistan. Okay, let's I know just... that's not Pakistan, though. We're still not even close. It's still really far over. So we are straight east from Pakistan. Give me a country next to China. That would be like Bangladesh or... But now I'm wondering if we're not, like if we're still not far east enough. We're not far east enough. It's eight thousand kilometers still straight east. So it's got to be like an island. Maybe that's why it's like the perfect circle of something. It's just some island nation. Um, do Fiji. We are not very good at this game. Okay, so it Closer, is closer though. It's an it island. Is an island. The two thousand, but now we got to go northwest. Northwest of Fiji. And is this our last guess? This is our last guess. Oh man! So northwest of Fiji, looking at an island, like a single island, a single island country or territory. Northwest of Fiji. Um. Northwest of Fiji. Oh, dude, what's the flip is northwest of Fiji? Uh, I'm like trying to imagine a map. And it's still how far away is it? We're 2,000 kilometers. So we're 2,000 kilometers away, northwest, with like a weird circle. What are you looking at right now? I'm just thinking. Dude, I have no idea what island. I don't know either. I need to look at a map. So I'm gonna look at a map real quick on my other screen. I'm not looking up like what this is. I'm just looking at the world map, right? I need to see some countries that are northwest of Fiji. Let's see. Okay, on this world map. Here we go. Yeah, I cheated and I found it. So I know what it is now. Is it an island? It is an island. I've never heard of, but like I would have never gotten this. Ever. Is it Nauru? It is Nauru, yeah. I only saw that because it's on this map and it, there's like no islands around. I would never, I've never heard of that either. Sorry. Yeah, I've never heard of this. That is extremely difficult. Um, I mean, wow. Yeah. Like, talk about obscure. So, just so you know, most of the time, it's not this hard. Let's see. How many people live in Nauru? Nauru. 10,000. 10,000 people live there. It has a population of 10,000 people? 10,834 is its estimate. And it's its own country? Its own country. It has its own flag. It is yeah. technically the richest country in the world. Body for body and acre for acre because of the government's annual income from the sale of phosphate. Like I don't, I don't, yeah. This that's not very fair. I mean, how would I have ever known about Nauru unless like I did some random things? There's only ten thousand people there. Yeah. Like that was a dumb one. That was crazy. That was a dumb. I one. will be shocked if there are people getting that. Like, I'm sure there are because there's people that know the geography that know all the countries, right? That's great. Good for you. But wow, wow. Yeah. Wow. All right. right. Well, this has been a great episode. It's great episode. Great. Tyler, you have a good night. You too. I will talk to you. I'll talk to you later. Yeah. Bye, everyone.